All right, welcome back to episode three. Um, so we've done geometry cleanup, we've uh, done mid-surfacing. Now we're probably going to want to mesh our mid-surface. That's a very natural next step. Uh, let me just drag and drop this model that we've been working on into my GUI. I'll right-click and show all. And um, as far as you know, two D meshing goes, we can really pick pick anything in here. Um, actually, this the skin is actually quite nice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate this. Just right click on it and isolate. And I'm going to mid surface this. It doesn't have a mid surface, so you need to remember how to mid surface. You're more than welcome to check back on our last videos. But clearly, this is going to be one of the easiest mid surfaces of your life. Um, and then I'm just going to go and hide all my solids. So solids, right click and hide. So I'm left with the surface. I'm going to go ahead and just throw a what we call a general 2D mesh on, right? So this um, quite quite easy to do. Um, show you some of the options here. Uh, these are going to be the default options. It kind of picks the standard element size based on what you have. Um, so I'm just going to select these. There happens to be three surfaces here. Some are cut. Um, and see an element size. And I also get this nice little measure at the bottom. So if I'm kind of wondering, well, what is 75 really? Because remember, we, we're not really unit based. So this isn't 75 inches per se. It's, it's dependent on the size of your model. This is just 75. Go ahead and hit mesh. Okay. So pretty, pretty typical mesh. Um, and what happens when, as soon as you mesh, you directly get put into what we call uh, interactive mode. And by interactive mode, you're actually allowed well, allowed, you not, not, not allowing you to do anything. You you have the opportunity to come and change the node seating. And that's what all of these numbers on your model are. These are the, the node seating, the number of nodes on a particular line or edge, um, etc. And depending on where that edge has been split, you're going to get a different kind of seating. So there's only one uh, between this and this. Uh, there's, there's only one element. On this curve, we see there's three. Um, so this kind of really directly shows you how the topology of your part, how it's split, um, affects the mesh seating. So um, just real quickly, you can uh, left click, select any of these edges, you get a little dialog, you can bump it up. If you wait just half a second, it'll, it'll update. Um, you can click off of that. You can uh, multi-click. You can select both of them, increase the density on both, uh, and on and on and on. Um, so this is this is fine. I'm going to hit escape. Um, we're, a lot of what we're going to do today is creating and deleting. Um, so I'm going to go back and select all my elements. I'm going to say, well, that, that was nice, but let me uh, let me try something else. I'm going to hit delete. Okay. Back to general 2D mesh. Especially in Arrow, we're really looking for um, quads. So we might be real tempted to do quads or quads only. You know, There's only so far you can go with quads. At some point, you're going to have to need some transition element. Um, so quad, I believe it would be a quad dominant mesh. Um, so once again, I'll just trade to the quads just for demonstration purposes, drag a box and hit mesh. Okay. <clears throat> so now we see we are uh, mostly quads every now and then you're going to get a triangle just because you, know, you have to. If I did quads only, then there would only be quads. And apart from this uh, interactive mode, we also put you in um, kind of a quality index as well. So what we're seeing here is uh, we're seeing this kind of um, not super helpful um, scale of max size, right? So this is show, it was showing max size greater than 20. I just went in and changed this number. I even I, and I asked for an element size of 75. So what this is doing is it's going to kind of give you, um, you know, these values um, here. And if you want a little more, obviously two colors does not a contour make, but you can click on min size or max size and you have some really nice uh, kind of options here. Once again, you can change um, any of these and then you can also toggle whether you want ISO above or below. And then you come back to min size, look at max size, get some really nice pictures with all your friends. Okay. Um, so this is nice and I'm going to leave this here for now um, because uh, I, wa I want to demonstrate once again how the geometry affects the, uh, the, the actual mesh that comes out. So um, I'm going to actually go back to geometry, and I'm going to come to split. I'm going to come to the split tool. And um, when I enter the split tool, um, 
I see all these edges. So now you can kind of see a little easier with the fixed points on. You can see why there's you know, only one element between these two. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to try to make you know, an arrow. We want quads, but I don't want this kind of skew. There's a, a better way to do this, um, and there is a better way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this interactive to kind of split this geometry, just drag from one end to the other, and it's snapping to these node locations, right? So I'm going to snap and snap, snap and snap. And what you kind of see what I'm doing is I'm trying to make four sided panels, essentially. Right? And that's going to be um, super helpful here in a little bit, even though this is going to get a little messy to uh, start with. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. I'm going to come and split this up one more time. Okay. All right, and on and on and on. I'll just do kind of half of the model over here. Okay, that'll be good. And I'm going to hit escape. And you saw how updated the, the, the mesh got updated when the geometry changed, right? That's a, a default process as well that the, the uh, you know, as you change the underlying geometry, the mesh on that surface will change. Okay. So once again, I, like I said, we're going to do a lot of creating and then deleting. So I'm going to delete all these elements once again. And one of the reasons why I made these panels is I wanted to come back to this 2D mesh. And instead of doing the general 2D mesh, which is uh, fine, we want to do the major 2D mesh. I'm just kidding. The panel mesh. Okay. So what the panel mesh does is it looks for four-sided uh, four little panels, essentially. And what it's going to do is it's going to have some rules for, uh, say, linking aspect ratios and edges. It's going to be quad only. It's going to um, do a lots of, of good little things for us. But kind of one of the rules of this um, is going to be that it has to have four surfaces. So I'm going to select all these surfaces again. We're going to notice that some get meshed and some don't. Okay. For the simple fact that they do or they have more or less than four, four edges in which we're trying to look at. So um, let's kind of look down here, right? So I kind of see this, you know, 5 and 5, 9 and 9, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, okay? So all of these in the panel mesh, all of these are linked, meaning if I change one in this interactive mode, they're all going to change, okay? That's quite nice. Okay? It's getting weird up here because this edge doesn't have any control on it, okay? So I can hit escape. That's wonderful. Uh, I think, you know, nine elements capturing this might be a little too much, or nine nodes, so I'll come down here and... Maybe bump that down a little bit. Oh, that's looking real, 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 real nice. I like that. Okay. See something up here as well? So this barely had four, four edges, right? Um, so we could either do one of two things. We could change the underlying geometry to make the mesh a little better, or um, we can accept this and in, into our life. And, and this is kind of the new uh, mesh that we have. Okay. So uh, the panel mesh is quite nice, and I, I really like it. But it, it will require you to do a little bit of you know, what I call this geometry editing, get your model set up. I'm using mostly the split tool and just make, you know, four edged um, parts. And they don't even have to be, you know, they're already, I can snap to the midpoint. Um, this is actually not a really uh, a bad idea at all to do something like this. Okay. This will help quite a bit. Um, okay. So it might, you know, look, a little odd what you're doing, but essentially you're kind of specifying, you know, these are all going to be four edges. Uh, I, just, I mean, four, you know, four edge panels. Hit mesh. Yeah. Looks quite nice. Okay. So just a little bit of time on your model uh, can, 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 you know, make, make quite a difference. All right. So this is the, the 2D meshing. Um, it's kind of an intro to it. Uh, the panel mesh I like to show for aerospace especially, but you can do the same thing in the general 2D mesh. You just have to know kind of what options to turn on. Um, and there's some options down here for linking opposite edge. These are some of the things that get on by default. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the last little piece of this that I'll, I'll throw into this episode is um, kind of one of the final pieces. So in this idea of mid-surfacing and then meshing, the, the final piece is, you know, uh, property assignment, okay? And while this skin is not the most exciting thing to assign properties to, um, I do want to point the tool out that does this. And the tool that we're looking for um, lives under elements, and it's called map thickness, okay? 
And this tool is agnostic. Um, and what I mean by agnostic is that it can take uh, source elements, it can take source solids, it can take source surfaces. Um, it can take all of these ideas uh, of input and then it can map them to say a target element, right? So I'm gonna come and pick solid because that's what my source geometry happens to be. Again, example. Um, so I pick the solid in which I want these you know, plate elements to be measured to. I can select my underlying plate elements. And then I can hit apply thickness. Again, this is not going to be very exciting at all, but um, you'll see those little kind of patches of element thickness and the like. Okay. Um, if I wanted to, what we'll see in later chapters, uh, we'll, we'll project some of these lines on because these are actually composite edges. So these are actually ply shapes. Um, so it would make more sense to do that. But you kind of see that the, the thickness gets mapped and um, there's all sorts of options in here as well. I'll point out for assigning offsets as well. So if you are, you have like a base surface that's not um, in the middle of your, your uh, mid surface, um, you can assign offsets to that. There's options for how many properties it makes and what, you know, group factor, thickness variation, all sorts of different options, you know, will we'll overwhelm you with options if you so choose. But, um, you know, I like to just point this tool out to kind of complete the process of, you know, mid surface tool, meshing, and then map thickness. And if this is what you do, for a lot of your job, um, I would probably ask you to make a custom toolbar. So at the very, very top, I'm gonna call this my mid surf mesh work flow. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good name. And then I'm gonna drag and drop these tools in there. So my mid surfaces, drag and drop. Um, I might take the, the 2D mesh and the panel mesh. I can take both. So I might be able to take panel mesh, drop it in, take the 2D mesh, drop it in. If I wanted to take all of the tools in 2D mesh, I'd grab this general 2D mesh, uh, the words, not the icon. And finally, I said uh, map thickness. Okay. So then I have this fun little workflow that's, you know, uh, maybe I want some other geometry tool. You probably want your split tool. Come here, right? so you're probably going to split first. And then, okay, so I've made my my little uh, workflow right. So splitting, cleaning up my geometry, mid surfacing. This is going to take me to all my mid surface options. Panel mesh this is going to take my panel mesh options, um, and then the map thickness tool will allow me to come in and map the thicknesses. Okay, so um, if this is what you do on a consistent basis, highly recommend that you just make a little make a make a new little uh, you know workflow here. And if you'd like, you can export it, save it with your friends, save it with your families. And then the newest, newest version, something I also like, is we had this ability to float, um, which, which I think is quite cool. So um, we've, we have this little thing right here. So all of those tools will be floated. Uh, not that that means anything, but they'll just kind of be out and about. So there's, I've had a few requests for, I want some, some tools you know, there all the time, right? So no matter what ribbon I'm in, I could always easily come back to my split tool okay. and it just takes you, it's kind of like a shortcut, but you don't have to navigate to the actual panel. So that's kind of nice. All right. With that, I'm going to think that's going to end my episode for today on 2D meshing. Uh, next week, I believe we're going to do mid surface meshing. So, uh, I mean, sorry, <laughs> we are doing mid surface meshing. I'm going to do mid meshing, direct mid meshing. We're going to skip the mid surface. Mid surface is so. 1990s. We're going to bring our workflow up to maybe the mid 2000s with a direct mid mesh uh, and show that workflow. So I hope everyone's doing well and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.